Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, I am going to prune my climbing rose. If you are new to Gardening with Creekside, we have this gorgeous climbing rose. This is the Generous Gardener by David Austin Roses, and it is climbing over the arch that kind of leads from our driveway into our back patio. We are entering into year number three with the Generous Gardener, and I have not been disappointed by this rose in the least bit. It has been a fantastic grower, gives me absolutely stunning, gorgeous, soft pink blooms. Last year, it was unbelievable. The first year it had good growth. It had some good beautiful flowers on it. So I was able to see what it was going to look like. But last year it just put on an absolutely spectacular display for us and I could not have been happier with it. I do actually have two of the roses each. Um, on each side of the arch there is one planted in the ground. Now this is a very, um, <laughs> very happy rose that grows really well. And so maybe if I were more patient, I could have just done one rose on a side and it, I think it definitely would um, reach over. And, but I am not a very patient gardener sometimes, especially with roses. I want to see the full flower power. So I have got a lot of pruning to do on this sweet rose. If you do one thing for your roses, it, pruning is absolutely imperative. The vast majority of all repeat blooming roses will bloom on new growth. The exceptions really are your old fashioned or your heirloom climbing roses. This does not fall into that category. It most definitely blooms on new growth. And so I need to give it a nice prune. It is from David Austin and I am a huge fan of David Austin, not only because of their plants and their genetics in their plants and how they breed them, but for their education pieces. If you will um, check out their website, their social media, they have wonderful tutorials, videos, step-by-step -step instructions, illustrations, you name it. They have it on how to care for your rose from the moment you get it to when it is a mature rose. So I highly recommend that you check those out. Even if you don't have a David Austin, maybe you have some other kind of another brand name, you know, plant brand, but it is that repeat flowering. The characteristics and how you treat it are going to be the same. So to do this job, I only need a handful of tools. One, I've got my ladder right over here because uh, Jenny's short little self will not be able to get up to the top. So I've got my ladder for the, um, the taller pieces that I need to get to. I talked about this in a video just the other day when I pruned my landscape roses right behind this one. These are some amazing, fantastic, these are rose gauntlet gloves. I got them from Gardener Supply Company. I am sure you can get them from tons of different places. That's just where I chose to order mine. They are very all leather, very nice and soft, very supple. They are not stiff. I can easily move around on them, but they protect not only my hand, because I'm a huge glove wearer, but when you're dealing with roses, roses have thorns. Some have bigger and fewer, and some have a ton of them. This has about an average amount of thorns, but you need to protect your hands and your arms. And so that's what is so great about these rose gauntlet gloves is it does protect it. Then of course, you're gonna need some really good clippers. These are Felco's, this is what I use. These are number two, that's what fits my hand. So if you're in the market for some good clippers, I recommend that you get Felco's. They are wonderful. We have a 10% coupon um, discount code. If you will look at our video description, there is a coupon code you can use to get 10% off your total order. This is what I'm gonna be using to prune my rose. Then, because this is a climbing rose, it is, um, does have some twine kind of holding it up there that I put throughout the growing season. I'm going to take that off as I prune it. And then as I prune it, I will need to reattach some of, um, of those stems to the arbor. What I have on there is a really soft rubber twine, I guess is the best way to describe it. But it is a soft, I got too many things in my hand. I need to get rid of some stuff. It is a really soft black stretchy cord. So if you can see this and it stretches, it is hollow. So it can kind of um, give way and give grace to the rose as it needs it. So it's not going to strangle the rose, which is very important. So I have those that I have used for a long time. 
fantastic now new that i've just purchased um, so i have not used these so i can't speak specifically on how well they work but i'm very excited about them um, because throughout the growing season you're going to have limbs that come off that need to be tucked in well so i went to the zon and was looking for some different road like supports for roses and i came across these little guys and these are clips that you just pinch and so you can hook the rose and then attach it either to another stem or to the um, the arbor itself so it comes in two different sizes it was a multi-pack so we have a smaller one and then i think this is a one inch one um, and so excited about that so we have those we need to try out um, today or another day and then this is really neat too so this is made by velcro so instead of a twine that you actually have to tie this is velcro so it's a nice very soft it is not prickly so it's not going to hurt the rose very soft and so we can take it and then you know attach it like that so there you go so we have those two new additions that we are going to try out um, if we need them today. Um, if not, if I don't need them today, then I know that I will use them as the growing season gets going. So my girls are getting ready to go to the grocery store for me. So if you hear a car in commotion, they're going to the grocery store. Mamas of Littles, just hang on. It does all that hard work you're putting in. It pays off because one day they'll be old enough to drive and they can go run errands for you. And oh my goodness, that just opens up a whole new world <laughs> in a whole bunch of different ways. All right, so we're going to move the camera around. I'm going to show you basically how we're going to tackle pruning this generous gardener climbing rose. Before we get too far into the actual pruning of the rose, I just want to say that um, I am not a very experienced rose gardener. This is, I am entering the third year of my gardening, uh, rose gardening career, just like the generous gardener. We started this journey together. Um, but I will just say that because I was late getting into doing roses because I was really intimidated. I thought that they were very going to be really fussy. I just didn't have the time to do them. Too much maintenance. I didn't know what I was doing. I was honestly a little scared to get into roses. But after seeing all the gorgeous pictures, of course, out there, and then really looking at the David Austin website, all their information, they really kind of took the fear of rose gardening away because they empowered me with all of that information. This is, something, in my opinion, I could be totally wrong on this. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I am. But from my experience, what I have found, the um, really the only bad way to prune a rose is if you don't prune it. So even if it's intimidating, and I am sure I am not gonna do this perfect. I, if, I, if the head gardener from David Austin came and pruned this rose, it would probably be different than how I'm gonna do it or how I have done it. So by no means is this like the perfect way to do it. I just wanna take the fear out and give you a little bit of knowledge and experience of, of what I have found in my two years of rose gardening. The main thing we want to do is you're looking for any damaged, diseased, dead um, stems in here. Those automatically are going to come out, right? So if you see something that is dead, you want to take it out. So I see one right here. Well, how do you know if something, if a stem is dead? It may sound silly and kind of obvious, but if it's, this is where, this is where roses get interesting because they're covered in thorns. Um, if it's dead, it is going to be brown. If it is alive and healthy, it is a nice, beautiful green. Um, so right here, I could see that this stem is obviously dead. It is totally brown. When I cut it down here at the bottom, it is brown. If it's nice and beautiful and green, it is alive. So anything dead, automatically gonna come out. You go all the way down to where you hit green and you're gonna cut the brown out. We want to take um, all of the thin limbs back. We want to keep our main stems. That's what we're looking at is our main stems. And then when we have that main stem and we have the little side stems coming off of that, we're going to cut them back to about, there's only about two to three inches of that side stem on there. Um, so that's how we're going to do it. Anything really thin, or weak is going to come out again i'm going to take it all the way back to that main stem look for it and then cut it out from down there i want 
all of my foliage to be off of this rose when I am done. I do not want to have any foliage like this left on here. That has got to come off. Um, the ro old rose hips, all of that is going to come off. We're going to just thin it out and trim it down. I did go through and try to remove most of, I still see, <laughs> I still see them in there, um, my my ties so that way when I'm cutting and I pull something it's not still attached. Uh, so basically we're just going to get in here all the little thin things are going to come out. Um, we're just going to thin this out so that way we have good air circulation in our rows once it starts um, flushing out. But yeah. All right. It's still a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Like this is a big rose and there's a lot to be done and um, but we're just going to go for it. Go for it. The only bad pruning job is no pruning job, right? That's what I'll just keep telling myself. I think I'm done for this side. Uh, I still obviously have to do go to the top and then go do the other side. Like I said, for me, it can be a little intimidating starting this rose because it is such a gigantic rose with tons of nice, big, healthy stems that are coming out of the ground. So trying to figure out, you know, exactly who do I cut, who do I, who do I leave, who do I just trim, that that kind of thing. It can be a little overwhelming. The, best advice I can give to you for that is to start with the obvious. Start with the ones that are obviously dead. Start with the ones that obviously are very small and thin and spindly. And just remember, you can always start um, on the conservative side as you trim because you can always cut off more. But once you cut it, you can't put it back. Um, also with that, with a rose, it's really hard to, to over prune it. So <laughs> there is a grace in that fact as well. What I will do is I'm going to finish pruning the whole arbor first, and then I'm going to come back and um, kind of tie in, attach these main, the main branches that I leave. I will go ahead and, and kind of tack it back onto the arbor so that way once it starts really flushing out and growing then it'll already be attached and that work will already be done. Thank you. 
All right, friends. So the climbing rose has been pruned. Uh, she is definitely much skinnier, <laughs> much tidier looking for sure. Because there are two different roses, right? We have one on each side. For whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the rose. But I seem to be doing a better job on the one that's closest to the forest pansy than the one that is closest to the hydrangeas. It just seems to have a better structure that goes up and I could find those main stems a little bit easier. Um, but you know what, it is what it is. And as soon as it gets all flushed out, everything will be just fine. I did go ahead and use some of the Velcro fasteners. You probably can see them. They're a little bit of a lighter color. That would be the only downside of using those as opposed to that little rubber back black twine tubing. Um, with the black tubing, you didn't see it at all, but those definitely were very easy to use. And as soon as this rose flushes out with growth, you're not going to see them. So if that bothers you, then I would go for, you know, the black tubing. If it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me, then just go for that. But I'm telling you, those gloves are going to save you because I took it, took it off the glove to use the Velcro because it was just a very, you know, you had to get your little fine motor skills going. And man, one thorn got me and just ripped open right the side of my thumb. And, uh, but it looks great. Very happy with it, especially how I was able to keep it going over nice and clipped and tight. Um, it looks great. So the whole gist of this video is if you have roses, just get out there and prune them. Do your absolute best. You want to keep your big, th strong, thick, I cannot talk, it's getting to the end of the day, your strong, thick stems. Get rid of any of weak ones. If they're the smaller stems, just trim them back. Everything on here got snipped. Even if it was a small branch, even if it only got pruned by like a half an inch, it still got pruned. So we have lots of new um, potential for lots of good growth, lots of beautiful flowers. It's going to be a gorgeous spring. Um, it will be here before we know it. So get out there and start pruning your roses if you are in a growing zone similar to mine. And you will know that your roses are ready when you start to see those little where the leaves are. They'll start to get, you know, kind of get swelled up a little bit and you'll be able to see them time to go ahead and start pruning. If you're under snow, just take note. You're going to be doing this a couple of weeks, probably after we are. Some, depending on where you are, could be four to six weeks behind us. But spring will be here before we know it. So get out there, enjoy the time, and um, get some work done. As always, thanks so much for going to the Creekside. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.